you know, what do they mean by when they're sending something to us? And a lot of the times, everything that's going to be sent to us is going to be permanent. It means we've got time to actually examine it, let formalin fix the tissue. Um, it's it's the most common thing that will come out of the OR to us. So, if, but first, let me digress just a little bit. If something comes out of the human body, it goes to pathology for examination, and that is about 99% of the time. There's a few times where it's going to go to, say, law enforcement, and we can talk about that as well. And there's a few times that the uh, surgeon will give it to the patient after the surgery to take home. And those are cases where it doesn't have to come to us. Um, but the majority of the time it's gonna get examined by pathology. We are like the quality control of the hospital. Um, so really anything that comes out of the human body, we've seen it from the small biopsy to, I can't believe the person swallowed a whole place setting of spoons. And some of you might remember that. And if you don't and you want to see a picture of it, we've got that there in the pathology room. Uh, along with spoons, there is a couple pin knives, a lighter, a few other smaller things, a roach clip, some bottle caps, amazing amount of stuff that came out of one person at one time, all kinds of foreign bodies. But if it does come out of the person, it comes to us for us to document it. Same thing with medical legal cases. So say somebody gets shot and law enforcement isn't there to immediately take control of that specimen, that foreign body for any better purpose comes to us. We'll sign it in and we have a place that we hold on to it behind a locked door and we take custody of it for that time period until law enforcement comes and gets it from us. So we'll go over that in a little bit. So first thing, um, I do list on here the different types of specimens that we will get from you guys. And um, we'll start with what is a fresh specimen. Sometimes the surgeon will say, send it fresh to pathology. Fresh means it needs to be kept like with isotonic saline, so on a wet Tesla pad, or just as soon as it comes out, it comes to us. No, no fixative on it. You can put it right in a sterile container and get it to us as soon as possible. And we're gonna do something with a fresh specimen. Now fresh isn't the same as frozen. And the reason I say that is because there are certain tests that can only be done on fresh tissue. If it's one of our ENT cases, it's head and neck, and they take out a lymph node or a part of a lymph node, and they send it to us fresh, they're actually looking probably for a lymphoma in these patients. And we've got to take a portion of that, send it down to flow cytometry so that they can get an answer back to them within, it's usually within um, a working day, so four to eight hours and they can have an immediate answer of what type of lymphoma is it. We accidentally put it on formalin, now you're looking at a 24 hour turnaround time. Minimum, probably 36 to 48 because of special tests we'd have to order to make up for the fact that we didn't do it fresh. That's number one. Number two is sometimes they'll take out something nasty, big old cyst, but they got it intact. And the surgeon did a great job getting it out and brought it to us, or you guys brought it to us, but they need a culture on it. So we will sterilely take a portion of that and send it to microbiology so they can grow those bugs and know how to treat it. So that would also come out fresh to us. Those are probably the two main things that would come out fresh. Third thing, and this happens every once in a while, you'll see kimchi or stavely O'Carroll do it. We'll take out an, a large solid organ and they'll send it fresh but they'll send it gross only now gross only doesn't mean that we're only going to look at it and just throw it away 
Gross only means that we're going to evaluate probably a margin on it, and they want a macroscopic margin, not a microscopic margin. So our pathologist, once we have dissected it, we'll see how close that tumor might be to any margin. And if it is too close, we might actually go ahead and take a section to do a frozen, but if not, just visually with our eyes, we'll tell them that they have a centimeter or two centimeters of distance to a margin, and that give them their uh, gross only. And then once that happens, we'll actually fix it and sample it accordingly over, no over our day, the processing goes overnight. So those are the things that might come out fresh and all frozen sections are going to come out fresh as well. So that's kind of where the rub comes. Hopefully they state right on the requisition that it is coming out for frozen. And some of the big mistakes that we've had, and I don't know if we have any circulators in the room because I don't want to call them out, is you don't write anything on the requisition. You hand a requisition and a specimen to the anesthesia tech and it gets run to us for a frozen section and then there's nothing on the requisition. That requisition is actually the doctor's orders and in order for us to do anything with the specimen we actually have to have the physical orders present for us to test it. So just like you getting a prescription, if they give you a blank prescription and you take it down to the pharmacy without any information written on it, it's kind of meaningless to the mm -hmm. pharmacy. For us, that requisition on a frozen section is very important. It tells us what we need to do. So what do we need on it? That's a good question. Um, it's going to have a part type, and then it's going to say the location where it came from. And if it's got any orientation on it, um, that would be important if it's listed there. So if they say short suture superior, long suture lateral, that information there is much better than the surgeon telling you guys to relay it to us. Um, you've all heard of the telephone game. I hate to go back to you know grade school way of thought, but a lot of information gets lost in translation there. So if they tell you, you tell me, and then I tell my um, physician that I'm working with, there's multiple chances for us to lose any valuable information. So if it's written down, that's very helpful for us. And then lastly, I want to see that word frozen for frozen section, fresh for fresh. You can put a P, circle it for permanent, and if you do that, then we want you to have a formalin time on there. Um, if you're looking at the back of your handout, I do have this requisition spot here at the bottom. So everything gets written on the white copy. It's a three-part form, and it's a carbon copy, so it'll transfer through. Please use a ballpoint pen, felt tip pens. Don't always press all the way through. I know there's a couple ORs that only have felt tip pens in there, which is unfortunate for us, because then we don't see it on the second or third sheet. If you're gonna send a frozen section, you tear off the bottom copy, which is pink. My handout has it red because my copy machine uh, didn't like me. But this is pink, and you'll bring me that pink copy with the first frozen section. Um, if there's subsequent frozen sections, you keep writing them on the white copy so all the information is kept there, and you'll bring me that yellow copy for the second set of frozen sections on that specimen. You can have, you know, five, six, ten on that first one, and if you still have room on the white copy to write more in, that second set you bring us, you bring us the yellow copy, and then if you have a third set, we want you to start a new whole sheet of frozen sections, a new carbon copy, a new white set. That way there is record on all the sheets. And you can have multiple sheets. We've had up to in the 40s on not just frozen sections but permanents. And frozen sections and permanents can intermix. They don't all have to be at the top. If any of you worked with Dr. Dooley or Dr. Galloway, they love sending frozen sections. They love sending 10 at a time. And then they'll do a couple permanents because we call something positive. And then they'll go back and do more frozen sections and vice versa. So 
let's talk a little bit about frozen sections. It's written up here at the top. Um, it's as a definite frozen. And what they're doing is they're usually trying to evaluate either a margin. So if they're doing a big resection for, say, a skin cancer, that's an easy one because we all visualize that. And we're doing a clock face around the skin. They're looking to see if tumor is still present on what's left in the patient. So we're telling them, yes, you have a clean margin or no, you don't have a clean margin. If they don't, they're usually gonna go after more. So frozen sections can keep going. The second main thing that they're doing is, what is this tissue? And they'll send it out to us and they just need a diagnosis. So another common example there would be as if they're doing a thyroidectomy and they take out a small piece of tissue and they're looking at, is this parathyroid tissue? And in our differential, it's parathyroid. It could be a lymph node, it could be thyroid, or they could be taking something, we don't know what it is, fat or soft tissue, something totally out of the realm. But they need to know that if it is parathyroid, well, they may be exploring for the other three parathyroids. They may have made a mistake and they shouldn't be taking out parathyroid if they're just doing a thyroidectomy. Or if it is big nodule and it's got cancer in it, they may open up and do a neck dissection because that cancer from the thyroid might be already out into the rest of the tissue. So for us, it's very important. What are they wanting? Is it a diagnosis? Is it a margin? Sometimes they need both. And in those cases, we try to give them all the answers that they want. We try to get that done in a 20 minute time period. So once you guys have dropped it off, you'll probably see a stamp a sheet and that starts our clock on being able to get a result back. Most of the time the surgeons continue to do something with the patient. They're continuing to remove that organ or they're doing a dissection, but there are the occasion where they stop and they wait on us to give them an answer. And that's a long 20 minutes in the OR where you're just waiting on pathology to give you a phone call. Um, what we do in that 20 minutes, I'll give you a quick rundown. So after we log in the specimen and we put it in the computer, it generates a number for us. We give it a macroscopic evaluation. That's basically, we look with our eyes, our hands, we measure it, we photograph it, we describe the outside of it. If it's for margin, we probably put some ink on it. That way, when we look under the microscope, we can see ink and we can see tissue. And if you then look you know, under magnification, the doctors can see whether it's cancerous tissue or regular tissue and how close it is to that ink. But then, so we've inked it, we select the tissue that we need. We actually put it in a negative 25 degree um, refrigerator or refrigerated microtome and it freezes that tissue. Hence the name frozen section. I mean, it makes sense. We cut the tissue, we put it on a slide, we stain it, and then that's when the pathologist then gets a stained slide of the tissue to look at. If we're lucky, that first set takes about 10 minutes, the whole evaluation, cutting it, staining it. And then that pathologist has half the time in order to make a diagnosis and call it back in. So what can you do to make your life easier on frozen sections? So when you bring us a specimen, if your circulator has been nice to you, they've put an extra label on the top of each one of your containers that lists all the information. So it's an IDX label, it's got the part type, it's signed, dated, for when the tissue was taken out. That extra label should match the one on the container. You can take it off the top of the container and put it in our log book. Then we ask you to write what OR you came from, time and initials in the log book. And then that's gonna leave three blank spaces in the log book. And this is different. It's just changed in the last two weeks. There is a whole right side of the log book now is for quality control. Just like you guys, we get inspected by um, an agency to make sure that we're up to standards. And the new standard is that we do quality control on all of our frozen sections. So now the right side of our logbook is just for the pathologist to fill out for quality control. 
So if you guys have brought something in recently, you might notice there's are more spaces in that log book. Your side's the left, our side's the right for quality control now. Um, if it's not a frozen section and it's a permanent section, when you bring those in, you won't be coming into the frozen section room, you'll be coming into the main lab. And there is also a log book right by the door. So we try to set it up very similar on both the frozen section room and the regular room that there's a log book by the door. If you have a container with tissue in it and it's for permanent, but it doesn't have formalin on it, we ask you to put formalin on it. Now, how much formalin is appropriate? Well, to properly fix tissue, it needs to be a 20 to one ratio, and we're never gonna achieve that in the containers that we have here in the hospital. So we ask you to get a container, if you have to get a container for the OR room, get a container that's gonna be big enough to fit the specimen easily. And then we ask you to put two inches of formalin over the tissue. That doesn't really get to our 20 to one ratio, but it's gonna get us closer to it than anything else. If you see you've got a room, say it's Dr. Koivinen or Albright, and they're doing a mastectomy, and they have the ice cream size gallon containers and they're trying to stuff a whole breast into it, that's not gonna be a big enough container. We do have three gallon containers. We have six gallon containers if you have a large colon or a panis coming out. Come get the proper size container from us. Our formalin comes in five gallon cubes. We're not gonna run out of formalin, so make sure that you add formalin. Formalin, it is considered a carcinogen, and it's wise to have goggles, not just glasses, but goggles and gloves when pouring formalin. You're already all in scrubs, so if you splash formalin on your scrubs, go back to the locker room and get different scrubs on. It will irritate you after a while. Formalin's like a salt. What it does is it arrests the degradation of the tissue by forming cross links between the proteins in the tissue. That way, it basically provides a snapshot of the tissue at the moment that it's taken out of the body. If you didn't put formalin on it, it would continue to die and necrose and Dead tissue looks like dead tissue. Dead cancer looks like dead tissue. Most cancers do have a little bit of necrosis with them, so you wouldn't be able to tell, is this cancer cells or is it just dead cells? So for us, if you put formalin on it, it does fix that tissue, it provides that snapshot right when it was taken out. We can see live tissue that is now captured in time next to dead tissue, and hopefully that live tissue is still gonna have cancer cells so we can tell that the two of them are, you know, different. Um, formalin does fix, but it fixes slowly. It fixes at about one millimeter per hour. So if you bring us a whole liver or a whole breast and it is huge, you know, it's centimeters in size, 20, 30 centimeters in size. The center of it's 15 centimeters away from the closest edge that formalin is gonna penetrate you're looking at hours upon hours before that whole tissue is fixed. So that's why it's important to start that fixation process as soon as possible. Smaller tissue, small GI biopsies, um, skin biopsies, smaller things like that, it does, it might be fixed within a couple hours. So that's helpful for us. Um, then I touched on it real quick, dry tissue, equals dead tissue. So one of the problems we do have is that sometimes surgeons wait. They take out two or three, maybe four or five pieces of tissue and they're going to send them for frozen sections, but they just put them on Telfa pads. They didn't put any saline on it and they just sit there in the OR drying out. By the time it gets to us, it's like trying to cut a potato chip and uh, it just breaks apart. But if it was kept wet, it would actually do better for us. So adding normal saline to those is very helpful. We're not actually asking you to drown it in saline. That's not what we're looking for, but 
just to keep it moist and wet. That's the best way for tissue to come to us. Now, if you just look at the beginning, I'll start right there. What needs to happen for a frozen section? Have someone in your room call us, give us a heads up. Um, I'm sure many of you have